In this segment, we'll talk about deferred income tax. And this is a rather simplified overview, but it's to give you the essence of what happens with taxes at the end of the year. We can see deferred taxes on our balance sheet, and this deferred t income tax account may show up as a current liability, a long-term liability. It may also show up on the balance sheet as a current asset or a non-current asset. So deferred taxes can be all over that balance sheet. The reason is, is the adjusting journal entry that is made at the end of every year on the last day of the year. Remember, we need to make it to match our revenues and expenses. So it's an estimate. So we're going to debit income tax expense. And that income tax expense shows up on the income statement as an expense. And we compute it by taking our earnings before income tax, or also known as uh, net income before tax, times the tax rate. We will skip a line and we will credit income tax payable. And the tax liability that we pay is not based upon our beautiful financial statement net income, but it's based upon the tax returns, taxable income, times the tax rate. Remember, we don't prepare our taxes on the last day of the year. We wait a bit because we need to gather all the pertinent information in order to compute our taxes. Realize that the approach to doing your taxes is different than the approach to do beautiful financial statements. So there'll be things called timing differences in the treatment of different items, such as, i.e., depreciation. For tax purposes, we use uh, modified accelerated cost recovery systems, or makers, whereas for our beautiful financial statements, we use straight line um, or double declining balance or units of production method for figuring out our depreciation. Also, for tax purposes, the estimate of bad debts is not allowed and you only take actual bad debts, whereas for financial statement purposes, remember we make an adjusting journal entry every year, setting up that allowance for bad debts or doubtful accounts or uncollectible accounts. So these timing differences means that our income tax expense will never be the same as the income taxes payable and that we may need to debit or credit an account called deferred taxes. And they're called deferred taxes because of these timing differences. So we will plug the difference between the book approach to income tax and the uh, income tax approach to income tax in deferred taxes. Now, in many companies, this is a substantial amount. The thing to realize is over time, over the life of that property plant and equipment, or over the life of accounts receivable, that these timing differences will wash out or, or compensate for each other under the two different methods. And so it would be a net sum of zero overall. So, what, how can we reconstruct that entry? Well, here's Nike, and Nike tells me the total income tax expense. So I know I'm going to debit income tax expense for 760. And I can see 
that my deferred taxes are 60 and that my total income tax payable is 820. So in this case, I needed to debit deferred taxes, that's why it's in brackets, for 60, because 760 plus 60 is 820. And that would be a way uh, to reconstruct what that adjusting journal entry was at the end of the year in its simplest form. Notice it's a lot more complicated than this, but in its simplest form, this is how you could figure out uh, the tax according to financial statement approaches versus the tax according to the IRS. The other thing you have to always disclose is the effective tax rate. So notice the U.S. tax rate is 35%, but Nike, because of its uh, foreign um, activities, only pays a effective rate of 25.5. Here's Coca-Cola's, and again, you can see that you're told the effective rate, you're told how much of the tax is current, and how much of it is deferred. So that's a simple snapshot of deferred taxes.